All right, so Zack Snyder wanted to do Star Wars. They said no, and he was like, all right, I'll just do my own thing. So Rebel Moon's essentially Zack Snyder's rated R Star Wars, but not Star Wars movie. Story goes, word around the campfire is Zack Snyder had this idea for this gritty rated R Star Wars story. Took it to Lucasfilm, they were like, we don't want it. Netflix was like, you can do it here. Bring all your Zack Snyder isms to the Star Wars, but not Star Wars world and make it rated PG-13, please. And this is for part one, a child on fire. So there's always someone on fire. It's always catching fire, the girl on fire, child of fire. Catchy stuff, throw fire in the title. You got yourself a win. So this stars Sophia Botella. As in Star Wars, there's big evil empire and they're a fascist empire, the space Nazis. Difference here is when you see the outfits, you're like, oh, they're not just space Nazis, they're Nazis in space. It starts out with his Zack Snyder's attempt at doing sci-fi intro to Inglorious Bastards. We come to Sophia Butella's character who's been hiding out on this farm moon. She's got skills, so she sets off to get a team together to take on the evil empire. And when this movie first started out, we're talking the first world you're on. I thought the CGI was really impressive. Probably because it's the first world. It's the hook. You want the CGI to be most impressive in the intro. After that, the CGI is kind of intermittent. Some CGI looks great. Other times, looks iffy. Those tentacles look CGI as fuck. Also, why? I get you're gonna pull from Star Wars. You really wanna pull from the tentacles in Rogue One? Don't do that. That's the scene we skip when we watch Rogue One. Some scenes have noticeable green screen, some scenes not. But if we are talking visual flair, it's absolutely in here because it's kind of Zack Snyder's wheelhouse. Also, I'm gonna do galactic scale world building. Wish me luck. But it'll probably look nice. But when I was on this moon, this Imperial General's being scary, Sophia Patel is like, you know what? Back to action, I'm gonna take these dudes out. And she does, I was like, okay, why is this movie being bagged on by critics? This is a pretty solid start. And the movie kept going, I was like, okay, there are complaints. Before I get to the actual complaints, what you need to know about the movie is it's a Zack Snyder space movie inspired by Star Wars which was inspired by other things itself. If you're a Zack Snyder fan, you're gonna be like, this has exactly what I thought it would have. If you don't like Zack Snyder, you're gonna be like, this has exactly what I thought it would have. Slow-mo shots? You know it, man. So many slow-mo shots. Slow-mo shots jumping in the air. Slow-mo laser blasts. Even the fucking rice dropped on the ground in slow-mo. Just gardeners throwing rice on the ground. For a garden. Rice, maybe it was seeds. Doesn't make it more or less necessary for a slow-mo shot. Not like anyone got blasted or anything. It was just gardening. I was like, somehow I'm not surprised. Michael Bay explosion, Zack Snyder slow-mo shots. There's this one scene where this dude is on a griffin, shirtless, abs are all out, just this muscular, handsome dude riding a griffin. I was like, I'll give him that. There's no one else out there really making movies that feel like 80s fantasy cover art. Is that Zack Snyder paying tribute to artist Boris Vallejo? I don't know for sure, but if I found out that was the case, I would not be surprised. But to its core, essentially the formula of this movie is hop to a new planet, recruit the new character, exposition dump. Rinse and repeat that formula until the very end fight, End credits. You see sci-fi inspiration in here in a world where a lot of sci-fi and or video games have pulled from other sci-fi stories, sci-fi, fantasy, whatever your flavor. I feel like we're all going to watch this movie and link it to something else. We're all gonna see different things, different connections. For me, it felt like a very rushed Final Fantasy game where you're going to the different locations, you end up meeting a new character, you bring that new character onto the team. Thus your team is building, everyone's coming together for a common goal, it's that crushed into a movie. Actually, it was very Final Fantasy in the sense that everyone looked different. I was gonna say felt different. I didn't get to know them well enough to say they felt different. Would have liked to have gotten to know the characters more. It concentrates more on Sophia Botella's character, which ends up being one of the problems. Rule of cinema, show don't tell. Giving me visual aids while someone is telling me the backstory does not count as show. That's still tell. And this happens a few times in the movie. You get more exposition dump with visual aids to go along with it. Something that usually happens at the beginning of a movie just 
happens sequentially throughout this movie. There is intriguing lore in this universe, in the canvas of this galaxy. It's just not delivered to you in a way that feels organic. So in the end, is this movie as good as a Zack Snyder fan probably wants it to be? No. Is it as bad as you might fear? No. It's essentially the embodiment of the difference between potential and reality, because this world has a lot of potential. But the reality of execution is, it's too much to cram into a movie. A smaller band of heroes that you can get to know better and less exposition vomit, probably would have helped out a lot. You don't really get attached to the characters except Sofia Boutella's character. She's the character that stands out and whatever he's gonna do with the droid in the sequel. I'm intrigued to see that, but it is solid Zack Snyder visual eye candy. There be the positives. Maybe by the end of chapter two and all the director's cuts is gonna be a solid fleshed out world. As it stands right now, I think this movie'd probably be a solid time if you're drunk. Yeah, now it's a party. I heard there's a director's cut coming out because everything has a director's cut nowadays. But with Zack Snyder, I have seen where his director's cuts are justified. I hope it's that. I hope it's like Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice where you watch the director's cut and you're like, oh, so that's the actual version of the movie. Rather than the director's cut of Rebel Moon part one being, oh, it's bloodier, people swear and there's more sex. That would just feel wasteful. Why would he not just put the rated R director's cut out first? Well, double the views, baby. Gotta be the reason. All right, so Rebel Moon Part 1, Child of Fire. Have you seen it? What did you think about it? Whatever you thought, comment below. Let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.